Hey everyone, a new set is coming out very, very soon. Set 6, Blazing Dragon Reborn in Japan. And that means it's time to experiment with some new decks. Now, these aren't like the perfect decks yet. You need to experiment, test with it. And then later on, we will have like the good decks when all the tournaments are happening and they're all fleshed out. But these are just some decks for you to just try out. You know, day one, you get some cards. How do you build them? You can just check these out and, and like give it a try, right? And we're going to do something a bit different this time because as we all know, usually what I do is I just you, like put out every single ride line and then put some updates to them. And that is basically going to be quite unsustainable because like let's say next year there probably could be like 100 ride lines and I'll need to put out like 500 decks to There is no way I can do that. Right? There is actually no way I can do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to only put in the decks that are either like new or have significant updates. Or really just don't have a lot of info with them, right? So kind of like the less supported decks. The other thing I want to mention is that I did not build Drag Jeweled because the main support for this set like really hasn't come out yet. So there's no point uh, to, to build it. And it's, it's literally just going to be like the TD plus a bunch of random junk that you can probably put in another deck and it'll be better, right? So like, oh, hey, I can put in a Brainwash Swirler and like a Pandemonium Tactics and it gets power, but you can do that in basically every other Dark Stays deck and it'll just be better because they have like the better cards, all right? So I, I just don't think there's a point to just make Drake Jeweled, right? Get the, If you want to get it, get a TD and then put in some of your cool cards and you're good to go, right? But I'm just going to be focusing on the other decks. So this time we have nine decks and we will kind of just go through them. Now, let's start off with the Dragon Empire stuff. The most hype thing from Dragon Empire is the new cross overdress mechanic and there's like a deck just fully built around that and this is pretty much it it's it's pretty pretty simple to build you put in like your prayer dragons right like you, I have nine prayer dragons here and we if we think about the numbers you know four ride deck then you draw like six right in the first turn uh, by the time you get to Miss Snuggly here right she it's like a it's like a 9 and like 30, 38 or 37, like, and then like just minus like each prayer dragon. So, so you still have a good chance of hitting, uh, but you'll probably miss once in a while, but you know, not too bad. The main star of the deck is Bills. Like this, when this card got released, Bills Virena, uh, everyone went, wow, this deck went from like missing a card to it's got the card. This is basically the sustain for the entire deck. It grabs you back your e crossover dress, your Jiva, right? She she grabs you back the other stuff, like the materials for it. And then this kind of just stays like a 15k base and a tank, like 15k shield like on the side. When you think about how this deck is going to work, right? You have you have your Jiva in the center, you have your main attacker on the side and then just a dude sitting there and chilling. As long as there's just a body there, basically, and Bills is that body. It's just gonna sit there and like be that extra attack once in a while. If you need that defense, you'll move it in, and that's kind of it. Like that's the way I see it. But then your main attackers are basically Garo and Brom, right? And Brom, Brom is like the the big guy. This is why we're running four Brom and like three Garo. And I was thinking like you could probably cut it down to like two Garo and run more of the Prayer Dragons instead because Garo is like. Okay, like it's like a 20k attacker, right? That, that's 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 cool. Uh, but otherwise, like as, as long as they're like not on five, you can kind of like no guard this. But meanwhile, Brom, right? Brom is like super fat. Okay, he's like 13, and then he gets 10 and a 10. So he's just 33 by himself, and then restanding 33 twice is really really annoying. Also, with some on hit pressure, I was I talked a lot of bad things about Bro. I'm like, he's not exciting, but he kind of gets the job done, right? This is the dude you want to stand with Jiva until your opponent's at five, and then he's just like hyper annoying. Even at five, he's still like really annoying to guard, and you know, he only gets bigger, right? So, 33 43 with Persona Ride, your, your opponent's damage zone is going to be filled with cards quite a lot. And then here with the with the kind of trigger lineup, I just went like uh, seven crit, right? Seven crit, uh, four draw, just because I want to get the extra draw to like kind of get as many cards as I can. Uh, in terms of counter blast usage, the only counter blast you basically use is um, from Nirvana Jiva, right? You use one every turn. At some point, you want to use uh, Br Brumaters CB1 when you like 
crossover dress, just like kind of go through the deck, draw, draw two, dis draw two, uh, discard one. Uh, but you don't want to use it too much. You just want to make sure you always have at least one CB available for for Jiva. And then in terms of soul, right? Uh, Bill's skill, uh, Bill's kill, right? It does. It requires a soul blast too for the effect. So when your overdress cross overdress unit dies, if this is in the um, if this is in the kind of the 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 original dress, you can soul blast too, and then call this unit's like an empty rearguard circle. I mean that's pretty cool. It's just getting a free free body. You don't really use that much soul again, of course, like Braum does use one soul, but that's kind of pretty much it. So you can use it if you want, but even if you don't use it, it's not too much of a biggie because, you know, Jiva resurrects not only a Trickstar, but also a Prayer Dragon. So you'll always get the materials. If you want to use this effect, it just means it's going to sit there and be a booster, which is not bad. You don't really have too many boosters, but if this boosts like a Bills Arena, for example, then that's like a nice 23 column, and then on the Persona Ride, that's 33. So overall, I think this deck is quite, quite good. Also, we only run like three, three trick stars. You don't really, it, it's kind of pretty easy to get trick stars back. So not too much of a big deal, I think. But yeah, overall, this deck seems pretty, pretty cool. Um, there's some like little ratios. I think you can change around with like Garoverina. Maybe you want to, you know, take that out or like, you know, run more of it. It's up to you. I guess like one more thing I do want to add is that Garovina, even, even though it's like, it doesn't hit as big as Braum. Right, it kind of stays at like 20k, so it's kind of very, very annoying to remove unless they have like actual removal. It's bigger than Bills, but Bills has like a like kind of a, a resist effect, so that just makes it a bit more tough. But this is like a 20k, so it just like sits there and, and bees very annoying. All right, they have to like commit cards to actually get rid of it, so, which is pretty nice. Moving on, we have Bavsagra, so this got a few upgrades. But I think the majority of it still remains the same. The big ones is like this PR that I got. This PR just basically allows you to... Basically says in the uh, in the deck, in the Bavsagra deck, is that, you know, when you're on Bavsagra and you play this from hand, you Soul Blast one and just dump a Trick Moon in the bin. And that's pretty good. But other, like, one, one of the biggest problems with this deck is that, you know, it doesn't get enough Trick Moons. You want to boost with a lot of Trick Moons and just, like, win. Like, like as soon as possible. But if you don't get any, uh, it's really bad. But she can help you get it if you don't have it. The reason why we still run like four and two because you always want to draw the Trick Moon. Like dumping the Trick Moon is like your last, last like kind of resort. The more Trick Moons you have, that means the more Trick Moon boost you're gonna have, and that means you're gonna be smacking your opponent for a lot of damage. One of the new cards that they got was this new dragon, uh, Sh Shibuda. Right? It hits like 15k, which is cool. But then it has the secondary effect where like. If you uh, res something from the drop zone, and if your Vanguard is Bavsaga, you can counterblast one and call it out. So that's pretty cool, right? You get a free 15k beater for CB1. The thing is, like, the deck uses a lot of CB, right? It uses a lot of CB. Of, of course, when you kind of resurrect a Trick Moon in the center slot, you do get it back. But I think you have, like, better uses for the CB, for sure. Like, one is, like, equipping, right? That's pretty cool. Uh, the second is just the uh, Festival Collection. Oh, Oshina, Oshina, this guy just hits 20k, and then at the same time, right, if you have, like, double, if, if you have the left equip as well, you can CB1, and then just get a grade 1 or less from the drop zone, so basically, you, just can, you can get, like, more good cards, right, get, get more trick moons, basically, so I think you want to devote more of your CB to that, but, you know, still running two, I, I still think, like, you, we can probably change the numbers, the other one is also, you're running Travis, just for more of the soul charge, this guy has just been around for ages, Right, you retire the front row, uh, then you just retire something else, and then it gets 10k in your soul charge. And the soul's pretty good, right? You do use some soul for some of your effects, so, you know, just getting more soul means more sustained with Bifsagra, and just, like, more time, more crits. It, it, it does everything. So, yeah, overall, not much has changed, but, you know, Bavsagra sometimes doesn't top as much and like, the major terms. I just kind of wanted to show it off. Moving on, we have Bruce. So I think Grade 3 Bruce will be making a comeback. The reason why we move back to Grade 3 Bruce is Grade 3 Bruce is pretty strong. It doesn't require CB as well to use the effect. The Persona Ride turns are pretty pretty good. Uh, so overall, uh, like, that's the good part. Like, sure, Grade 4, grade four Bruce does let you kind of, like, you know, restand with the Vanguard, which is pretty significant. But Grade 3 Bruce, like, still allows you to run, like, a lot of the good old cards, like Leonard, for example. And then, you know, Derek. So one thing I really wanted to try with this deck is to not run as many orders, right? Basically, I don't run any orders just to give it a try. And we're going to rely on some of the new cards to Soul Charge. The other thing we don't have is the Marjorie, 
right? Marjorie does like allow us to get some more sustain, but I'm thinking, can we do without, right? Let's test it without and like think of like, just, 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 just see if we can, if we don't have to rely on those cards. If we have to run like Marjorie, that means we're running four more cards of like no shield. So it makes it pretty, a bit iffy, right? A bit iffy. But let's talk about some of the new stuff that is added to the deck. So this is, this is Julian. He's really, really cool, right? So this basic, his effect does not require you to be in Final Rush, which is huge. It is actually huge. So when he attacks the Vanguard, right, you can counterblast one. And then for each card in your damage zone, this card gets plus 2k. So you have three, he gets plus six. That's his, that hits a number, right? If Bruce is your Van, if you have a Bruce Vanguard, uh, for each, for every two cards in your damage zone, you still charge one. And then for each card that you sold, you may call uh, up to the same number of cards out into like the uh, into empty rearguard circles. So that's that allow since it's like a battle phase call out, you can as long as like you call a call like a like something in on the other side, you can technically call it out and then make more attacks under Persona Ride, you're like double dipping on the power. And this guy like kind of CB's one CB1 gets like the soul charge, it also gets power at the same time. So I think that's pretty good, right? I think it just has like a lot of multiple multiple uses and you can also use him without needing to be in final rush so you can kind of just set up the turn before as long as you have a julian the other cards we're like running is this uh deandre so this guy kind of combos with with julian in that like his effect is when it comes out from the soul into the regard circle you have bruce vanguard if you for every two cards in your damage zone it gets plus 10k so what we're looking for is on that big final rush turn, you have like probably like four or five damage. It's like the final turn. And you call this guy out with like a Julian, bam, right? It's it's time to it's time to pop off. He's like a 30k, 40k under persona ride. And he restands again. So that, that's pretty cool, right? We still have like the other old cards. You have like Megan, who just hits really big. Again, Leonard and Derek are back just because you know you, you're running great through great through Brisket and can get the max out effects. Derek's just like like kind of your go-to to like make make soul like if you really need it or make a field and then Lennon's just there to be very very annoying and then you, you're running four protobulbs one because it can help you get the cards that you need and then also because you can kind of empty spaces to just call out which is pretty good right it's pretty good and the dog is cool the dog is cool you know you can call out dogs again and just like make even bigger bigger lines uh we're running like the rainbow trigger right the rainbow trigger i know like bruce before ran a lot of draws at some point uh now you can just i think you just run everything you don't need that many draws uh you can have some good defense and things like that so i i want to give this a try if it doesn't work then we're going back to like a pandemonium tactics you know kind of build brainwash swirler or something like that or you know just just we're putting back orders to make extra power or we're putting back marjories but this is basically like kind of more experimental let's see what this grade three bruce can do can it be fast can it just like be faster basically and since we don't have to worry about the counter blast anymore for grade four bruce we have a few more tools we can put back in and work with uh, the other deck that really got some support is greedon so greedon's becoming really really getting it, it actually it, it got a lot of support let's let, let's let's keep it real it got more support in festival collection then it got more support in uh in this set so we have the whole greed online what are some cool stuff that it's got so it's got this new eagle I don't know if it's an eagle. It's a bird. Let's just call it a bird. So this is a new desire devil. So this card is very, very important. The biggest problem with Greedon is that it always kind of decked out. It, it would have enough hand. It put on just like a decent amount of pressure, but then it'll just deck out, right? But this card prevents that. So when this unit uh, is not boosted, when a Taxon is not boosted, if your Vanguard is Greedon, uh, from your drop zone, you can grab up to four desire, desire Devil normal units. And then if you put at least one or higher back into the deck you will shuffle and then if you put four this unit gets 10k so it basically this basically puts cards back in the deck long story short right so you always kind of probably want to see one at least one in a game so you don't deck out and because of that extra kind of turn that you get you put in more pressure to your opponent they, they run out of like nulls finally and then you can win which is pretty good the other card that we also have that we also got is this other thing this is like a is this alligator right this is an alligator right so uh, when this card is put into the soul from the regard circle via like a Greedon's ability, you can counter charge one if you haven't counter charged this turn. So yeah, that's cool. Uh, generally, we didn't use that much counter blast before, but with some of the effects now we do. But the second, the second effect is more important. So when it's in the soul, when you're rear guard, 
is uh, placed via a card's ability. Uh, if your Vanguard is green on and your damage zone is four or higher, that called unit gets plus 5k. So ideally you want four of these in soul. And then, you know, when you do your green on moves, one guy comes out when you call it out through, the, through this. I think it's a, I don't know if it's a rabbit or not. Right, but when you call him out, bam, dude comes out. Now it gets a, a boatload of power and is very, very cool, right? It, it can put on more pressure, which is the most important part. And then we also still run, um, I don't know, is this Nib Nibiros, something like that? But this card, still great. Soul Charges lets you hit those numbers of green on earlier. But also, the most important part is that if you have two green on the soul when, it's, when it attacks, Counter Blast one and give it a crit. So there's that extra pressure we want as well. Um, and that's where kind of like the extra counter blasts are coming from. The other one is also just this owl as well. So when you're uh, w with this owl, it allows you to soul charge uh, from from basically the drop zone. So if you have like just just these cards, you're not afraid you're not afraid to throw away like pieces because you have the owl, right? The rest of the deck is pretty sim pretty pretty similar, right? We we run a lot, basically everything from like festival collection and up. We're just running those cards. Uh, we we're still running the draws because you know. The deck, it's you want to get advantage. Draws are still a way to get advantage. Now their 10k shield is not bad. Now they have ways to put things back. Uh, it's not bad as well. I think some of you might mention like, why aren't you running the 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 greed on denial Griffin combo, right? That got recently got revealed in standard to work, and that is because you just don't have the space for it and you don't have the resources for it. You have to run like a specific order, and you also have to have a specific card of the field, and then you have to like sacrifice four soul to to kind of like negate one of their attacks which is great like stopping attacks is good but you have to devote so much to it and have so much uh you know a specific s scenario happen right it's a multi-card combo and you need to devote a lot of resource to it and a lot of deck space that i just don't think is worth it right i'd rather the whole deck just be way more consistent than relying on a specific gimmick combo that will turn like that will change the game like once in x games but just make like ha having this kind of like a weaker deck will make your the rest of the game suffer. That's basically with Greedon. Greedon's a bit looking a bit more scarier than it was before, which is which is pretty cool. Next we have is like Youthberg. So I built this pretty cookie cutter, I think. I know I, I saw like different fighters playing around with uh, K's and Betty Veers. I just went full cookie cookie cutter mode. Uh, we're running. I was, I was I was playing around with the idea of like running one of the TD kind of. Uh, youthberg cards but i just went with four because at least this has an effect that allows you to just immediately use it like the, se the second effect for youthberg just allows you to like either grab a card or just like grab grab something to bash with right uh we're running a lot of these kind of rebel dress stuff we're running like a four three split uh, it's basically like seven and then we have three more of youthbergs in there this is basically because i always want uh schneisel to, to kind of hit something like counter blast one look at top five and grab like a Youthberg Grade 3. So one of those cards would be really, really cool. And then like the more you use them, the more you compress, which is great. Otherwise, like, otherwise the rest of these cards is just, you know, you're just running a uh, Frida, who's just extra 5k shield, 10k shield, that's cool. You're running a lot of Grade 3s again, so, you know, extra shield is nice. And you also have Katawara, and this one is kind of interesting. So at the end of the battle that attacks a Vanguard, if you have four or more units, you can Soul Blast 1 and retire this, and then look at the top three cards of your deck, grab a grade 2 or higher card, uh, and then put it into your hand. Um, and then if you don't reveal a grade 2 or higher card, you, just, you, you draw a card, right? So that, that's you, you're always getting something back from it, which is nice, and you're using your soul, which will get more... You get more cards in soul because you're just hopefully revel dressing every turn. Uh, the other grade 1 we run is just Painkiller, and again, again that, that kind of converts cards back into hand. And then for the sh the trigger lineup, we're running fronts as well because because we do run a lot of threes, and even though we're trying to fil filter out all the threes, uh, we still run fronts because we want that extra shield. And also, you know, when you w you're gonna usually attack Vanguard first anyway, and and just split the fronts, which is which is which is fine. It's fine. Like not really that much to say about this deck. It's I think this has been discussed quite a lot because everyone is super hyped about Youthberg. And then I guess we'll just see how the, the meta develops for it and what cards get swapped out and, you know, what maybe new kind of funny tactic is available for this deck. The next one is Hexa Orb. So with Hexa Orb, they got some new cards as well, but it kind of doesn't, it kind of helps, but doesn't fully fix the fact that the deck is overall quite clunky, which is kind of what I don't like about the deck and kind of the weaknesses about the deck. 
So let's kind of talk about some of the new cards. So we have this new Inoculate Angel or Inoculate Angel. And this is your new counter charger, which is cool. Like before you were relying on like kind of a combo to soul charge more cards and then you have enough soul to like counter charge, you know, something like that. But now we have the counter charge just on one card. Uh, the only issue I have with this card is that this guy, well, not this guy, but this angel needs to live, right? So if your opponent has retire effects, then you don't get to counter charge as much. Uh, basically her effect is that when your Vanguard is, when your grade three Vanguard is ridden upon, you soul blast one retired and counter charge and then your Vanguard gets 5k, right? It's kind of like still a two card combo because you have to like kind of ride over your, your, your great. So you basically have the Persona ride, right? The, the old combo you have to check to make sure you get a drive check, or like a trigger check and things like that. So one, one of the things also is that we had soul issues before, right? Because a lot of our effects required soul. But we had a new, we have a new card here. I think this is Quadracast Sorceress. And this basically just allows you to look at the top two cards of your deck, rearrange it, and then soul charge one. So you see a trigger, you see a non-trigger, uh, you, you swap it, and then soul charge the non-trigger, right? That, that's pretty cool. It fixes your soul charging issue. It's just like a one card now. You don't have to, re again, rely on other factors. But otherwise, the rest of this deck is just based... The, the idea is still uh, more front-focused. So we're just running Totote, right? And trigger front, just restand the other side. I, I, I do kind of like this combo because, you know, you still have your grade 3 at the front. And that means you're in March, no, when it's triggered. Uh, you still have, like, max... Well, not max value, but you still get some value from that. And then the new... Another new card we have is this Sorceress. And then this one is just, like, if you have... When, when it's placed and you have a grade 3 or higher uh, Vanguard with Sorceress, is the same. You can Counter Blast 1. Uh, look at the top two cards of your deck. Uh, pick up the two cards and add them to your hand, which is pretty cool. And then put the rest on top of your deck. And then if you put two cards, you discard one. Well, you put one card and put it to the bottom of the deck. You get to uh, filter your hand a bit, right? You don't have to choose one of the cards that you pick. You, you pick one card from hand and put it to the bottom. So you can pick basically uh, the worst one. And then the second effect is when it attacks. Um, if you've Persona ridden this turn, but this turn this gets like a 5k. So if you re-stand this, it gets another 5k, which is nice. But yeah, that is basically the Hex Orb deck. It's kind of still has the same issues as before. So when I was building Leonorn, right, one of the issues I found was that, you know, this deck really doesn't do anything. Uh, but also, also that it has a lot of soul issues, right? So one of the things I did was I decided to run the TD Leonorn in the ride line and then run four of the booster ones in the main deck. So we kind of have like one extra Persona ride, which is nice, right? You know, more Persona rides is good. And... Like, you might say that, you know, the, the, the TD one is not as good as the uh, as the booster one. The only thing you're missing out with this Leonorn is the CB1, draw one, and call one effect on the booster. Which is not super significant in my opinion. I think it's like, okay, sure, you know, if you, if you have it, you have it. Uh, maybe I might change my mind, right? Maybe I won't, but we'll see. Uh, but also to fix the soul issues, we run three of this the, the red petal girl, the red flower girl, which lets us soul charge two. Uh, when we have zero cards in soul and then we still run the effect crits so that kind of can probably help us you know save some soul and one of the things i was also thinking of is what what gimmick do we put in this deck i know some people were like mixing this with zorga the zorga dragon just kind of make you know, just do that that push one thing i did was we have this other petal girl as well right this i think it's tianza dianza and then when she comes into play basically uh, if you have a grade 3 vanguard, right, you CB1 and from call a card from your drop zone that's grade 3 or lower. So what you can do is you can call back your, t call back your like, perfect guards and over trigger and things like that. And then bounce it back with the ghost chase that we're running. So remember this old combo, super old combo, right, ghost chase right there? Yeah, we're, we're running it. Um, and then share second effect is basically that, you know, if you have uh, two or more grade 1 or less cards in the back row, she gets 5k, so she's like a 13k booster. That's pretty cool, right? 13k booster is nice. And then her effect also lets us call out some of the the, the less copies of grade... Well, basically the less copy cards now, they're not grade 1, it's just, it's just any card that we need at the time. So we need more soul, we can call her. Uh, but yeah, you just you see there's a bunch of like weird weird kind of experimental cards in a way. Uh, one thing I was also trying is that you, know, you can run uh, this person who's like... I think Tudosia, right? But you know, if if she's like in the back row, uh, the the card that is in the same column as her can't be can't be attacked. So you can you can put this behind this this uh these new kind of intercepts are getting these big intercepts. So they have a condition, but basically his condition is you have a grade one or less, um, or 
two, two, or, two or more grade one or less cards in the back row whenever uh, this card intercepts. It gets plus 10k shield, so it's a 15k shield. But the annoying thing, you know, they see this, they're gonna attack into it, they're gonna try to get rid of it, right? So if you put this in front of uh, Diosha or the, the, the Aqua Force lady, right? Uh, they can't get attacked, so, so you have a good kind of, you know, extra intercept going, and then you can kind of call them out if you want to. Uh, other than that, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. I think we're also running, yeah, we have the Ghost Chase and we have the Zorg Order to get the extra drive, you know, because like quad drive, whoa, that's pretty cool, right? But just to kind of dump extra Ghost Chases if we, if we have too many. And then we kind of have like the on hit potential with the uh, the, the Pirate Kid. Yeah, so, you know, our Leonorn getting multiple drives, getting boosts, a lot of kind of, we'll make your opponent like try to guard that, right? Uh, but we just had, this like the extra spice, right? If it hits, if your Leonorn hits, hey, you get to salvage back an order, which is, which is pretty cool. But th that, that is basically the thing with Leonor. It's, it seems like a pretty pretty simple deck. You know, make big Vanguard numbers. Hope your opponent can guard and then just trigger a bunch of crits. And that's also why we're not running any draws, right? Just get get, get crits, you know, trigger some fronts, make your front row big, and then just pop off. Next we have is Brandgate stuff. We have Orphis. So Orphis does have some changes. With the Orphis deck, I try not to put in the PR. Um, simply because, you know, it's... it's might be a bit annoying to get, but we can actually get away without running it, and this is kind of the build I did come up with. We have uh, Orphus Rages, right? Very, very cool guy. We have some new kind of support, so we have this new dragon. Um, I think it's like Nuvare, right? So his effect is that when it attacks uh, for each world in your or order zone, it gets plus 2k. So, you know, easy, easy plus 6k, you have three worlds, and then, you know, hit summers, right? Second effect is that when it's retired on the from the regard circle, uh, if you have, if you're, if you're in Abyssal Dark Knight, you call a Shadow Army token. So, you know, that, that's cool. Like, any anything that retires him will get the Shadow Army token. So, even if you call over him, you'll get the Shadow Army token. And that's kind of, like, what this deck is going to do. So, you're going to kind of combo this with Thumbarino, ideally, get some draws. And uh, that's cool, right? I I'm running some Kuljameet as well. Kuljameet, I really like this card, but we I can only fit in two of it. And then we have two of the uh, two Counter Chargers. All right, two Counter Chargers. Uh, if you if uh, when, when this card attacks or boosts, if you're in Abyssal Dark Knight, you can retire one of your Shadow Army tokens and just counter charge one. Because we do kind of do use a lot of counter charge or counter blast in this deck, uh, but this will you're gonna be retiring some of your Shadow Army tokens anyway to kind of like play over. So this is like this, this is fine. We run eight orders, eight worlds. Well, we actually run nine orders. We run eight worlds, so these are your targets, and we run three of the penguins to kind of get through get to them. Um, but yeah, the, the Rages will just make multiple attacks. Hopefully you have a lot of this, uh, this, this weirdo looking, uh, circle, circle stone here that will bump up your Shadow Army tokens, and then suddenly they're all hitting massive numbers, massive numbers, massive numbers, and then your opponent just dies through multi-attacks. So, very, very cool. And then the last deck we have is the Hero deck, and this one, it was kind of pretty, pretty easy to build, right? You get four bases, your bases kind of... Uh, get heroes. You basically have to run like maxed out hero slots in everything because because of these bases, right? When you place them um, in the order zone, you look at the top seven and then, you know, you pick up to three heroes, put one of them into your hand and then you uh, scout the rest, which is basically you put them under this thing. So yeah, you, you have to just run maxed orders, uh, not max or max heroes. So you can kind of get as many of them out from your deck as you can. Right, this also means that the slots that you have in this deck is quite low, like the free slots. So what I did was I just ran like two of this dude. Um, I think it's like uh, some helper dude, right? It's a robot. It's a robot. And basically what it does is you, when it comes to the play, you soul blast one, pick a card from your, a hero card from your drop zone, and then you put it into, you scout it into your base. You put it back into your base. Um, and then we run two of the uh, two of the bold mean because it goes to stolen counter charges, right? This is very very important. I know some decks are running the penguin as well, just just to try to dig more of this base. But like the way I see it is like if you get the base, you get it. If you don't, you don't, right? You'll always get one base. Um, you can get multiple bases that will thin your deck out quite a lot. Uh, but in terms of like what you can actually do with the base, it's like not too much. Sure, like you can. You can rest it, discard a card from your hand, and then you can call a card out, basically. And that, that that's nice, that's nice, because you have ways to, like, put cards from your drop zone back, kind of recycle it. But then in terms of, like, the good effect, which is the second one, this is just, you know, uh, when one of your units is, is attacked, you can Soul Blast one, and then rest it, and then, you know, kind of guard from the scout zone. This requires a Soul Blast, and this is basically going to be the huge limiting factor for the entire deck, because you also need Soul for this girl, 
which basically lets you swap units around. And that's how you get the multi-attack. So you're going to be competing for soul with this, and then um, the only real way to soul charge as well is this hero, which is when it's scouted, you soul charge one, right? But then if, if you if you use the, the, the robot helper to kind of put this guy back, you soul blast one and soul charge one, so that's not really gaining soul. So in terms of, uh, in terms of like, uh, you know, soul, it's going to be really, really tight, really, really tight. So you're going to, you know, probably use the crits. The, 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 the crit crit soul you know, what means that's like the real ways to only generate soul so uh, having multiples of the base out is cool it's gonna give your like uh, main hero dude like a crit right if you have three bases it's gonna get a crit but otherwise in terms of the actual secondary effect from the guarding you, it's not gonna happen too much you, you just you just don't have the soul to keep on like like popping out popping out heroes like the main thing you're going to be doing with this base is just like kind of getting a card out every turn from it and then just hopefully like double critting and things like that so yeah having like two bases to kind of get cards out and filter your hand is nice uh, but it's, it's still on a plus right it's still not exactly a plus you know so uh, it's not too I don't think it's it's that that's super important to dig them all out of your deck as soon as possible I, I, like the, the best thing I guess is like you know if you have four bases you have the possibility of just getting 12 heroes out of your deck um, and then you're in a good position to like crit and trigger and things like that but in terms of like using like putting in cards to like dig for this and those cards are going to be useless later on who's basically what the penguin is uh, I don't think it's worth it so basically, those are all the decks I revealed today. Again, I did not put in a Drag Jewel deck because it's going to look like your TD and then you throw a bunch of junk into it and that will be a deck. And I'm sure everyone can do that. We're just going to have to wait for set 7 for like a, the good stuff, right? The good stuff where it's going to get 5 attacks and things like that. But otherwise, if there is a deck that you're interested in, let, let me know. I might do something for, for like them. Otherwise, we're going to see a lot more decks come out like very soon anyway. So... Uh, I don't really think there's that much of a point. Like, the, like some of the decks have so, such little changes. I don't think there's going to be much changes. Um, I think these are basically the most interesting ones from this set. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, let me know what you guys, you know, if you if you built the decks already, what what what, what are your opinions on it? And I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, bye. <laughs>